it's good to start five minutes early. Right? Because typically either you're on time or late, right? So good to start early. So how many of you um, develop applications for cloud? Okay. Um, and how many of you use Eclipse for developing applications for cloud? Okay, that's good. So did you raise your hands for developing applications for cloud as well? <laughs> okay, I didn't see that. Okay, right. So what we are going to focus on is cloud, developing applications for cloud using Eclipse. So I'm not going to talk in detail about cloud applications. I will give you an overview just to, uh, just to bring us all on the same page in terms of what are the challenges, right? And then kind of introduce you certain tools and certain, actually there are certain top level projects in Eclipse which are very much suited for cloud development, right? I want to introduce you the Eclipse cloud development tools as well. So that's the objective of this talk. So we'll look at what are applications in the cloud era, right? What is so special about them? And then we'll look at the cloud platforms, right? Um, Again, there are varieties of uh, platforms out there. We'll take a peek at them. And then we will uh, see how to prepare your Eclipse environment to develop and deploy applications to cloud. We'll try to develop an online application store, um, online retail store using uh, microservices, right? I can point you to the um, article about it, right? All, I, all we have is 20 minutes, so I don't think we can do that um, entirely. And then, of course, we want to practice DevOps, right? So I'm pretty sure you would have heard about the term called DevOps, right? It's all about how quickly you can get your changes on to your users, right? The time span between when you make the first the line of uh, line of code to the time it gets to the hands of real users. Okay, so what's so special about the applications in um, cloud era? So let's take the end user point of view, right? So those applications are available anytime, anywhere. It's always on. You expect them to be available all the time, right? Unlike the applications that run on your desktop, right? Because it, you wouldn't expect that kind of robustness um, for the applications that run on, run on your desktop or that kind of availability. And the most important, one of the most important ones, right? Refresh, right? You are always using the latest version of the application, right? In the case of desktop applications, you typically have multiple release trains going, right? But in the case of cloud applications, it's all you are always on the latest one. And then, of course, best-in-class experience, whether it is functional experience, the features, or non-functional experience uh, in terms of performance, security, compliance, for example, right? And from an app developer point of view, and that's what is more important, right? From an app developer point of view, so no downtime and always the latest. Right? So composed of various services. So gone are those days where you build this whole application, right? And of course, you're all self-contained, but that will be the purpose, the very purpose or very objective that's in the first one which is no downtime. If your application is a single monolithic application, you cannot update them in pieces. You have to bring it down before you update them, right? So the downtime will increase. And each service, so this is another uh, phenomenon that has been happening in the last few years. It's called the polyglot program, right? So you are at liberty to use you, your own uh, technology, the technology that you're familiar with, right? It's the, la the language and runtime. You're not tied to a particular language, right? 
or a particular platform. Right? So as an application developer, right, you should be able to accommodate all of these. Right? So for the last one, what it means is that you should be able to consume services which are written in other languages, which depends on other technologies and runtime. So now let's look at the cloud platform. So the first one in the cloud platform is infrastructure as service, right? So that that's the uh, that's the bottom layer, right? And it's all about compute, network, and storage, right? You can get your systems provi provisioned, right? You can add enough memory, you can add enough cores, you can. Uh, even provision uh, the IPs on them, right? The virtual IPs. That's about infrastructure as service, right? And then you have containers, right? Infrastructure as service brought VMs, right? Then you have containers. What's the difference between containers and VM? They all kind of serve the similar purpose, right? But at different levels. Containers sit on top of the operating system. So in order to run a container, you don't need an operating system license. You don't need to worry about patching the operating system, right? So, and that's one way for you to package your application and its dependencies as a container so that you can move them around, right? From one VM to another VM, right? And then comes platform as a service, right? So, um, what do they provide? They provide you the runtime, essentially the middleware, right? So you don't have, to, suppose you go for infrastructure as a service, uh, the way the life cycle for an application goes like this, right? You provision a virtual machine, you set up the operating system, right? And then you set up the middleware required, which includes the app server, which includes the database server, and you are entirely responsible for uh, setting up the right configuration as well, right? Tuning the app server configuration, making sure that the compliance levels are met, right? And fighting those dark battles, right? For example, app servers have certain things hidden. Um, one of them is the class loading order, right? And if you really don't understand some of these technical, um, the deep technical aspects of the app server, you can run into problems when you, <clears throat> and it will be very hard for you to diagnose them as well, right? That is where platform as a service come into, um, come to your help. It gives you the whole environment all you have to do is worry about the code, right? So it brings in, it gives you everything, hardware, storage, network, operating system, all the way, right? Except for code and data. That's all you deal with. So that is, that is the cloud platform, right? So there are a few cloud platforms out there, right? So the, there are uh, there is an open one called um, Cloud Foundry, right? You would have heard about it. It's from Pivotal. Right? IBM worked with Pivotal to make it open so, um, uh, open source, right? And um, and there are a variety of other ones as well, right? For example, there is there is uh, there is a talk following this uh, for about OpenShift, right? From Red Hat, and then there is Microsoft Azure as well, right? And I'm going to give you an overview of IBM cloud platform, which is called Bloomix. How many of you heard about Bloomix? That's pretty good. Right. Um, so I don't. That's good news because I don't have to spend that much time on this. Right. I can uh, move over uh, quickly. So Bloomix provides you from a um, from an entry point perspective. You can get an infrastructure provision from Bloomix. You can get a container, uh, you can have a container hosted on Bloomix. You can also have your applications hosted on Bloomix, right? So those applications could be uh, written in Node.js, it could be written in Java, it could be in PHP, it could be written even in .NET, right? And we also have Apple Swift runtime as well on Bloomix. So there is another talk following this in the same track about that. So um, now coming to dev tooling, right? So that's the DevOps team. Bloomix also gives you the kind of tools that you need to develop applications and to deploy applications as well, right? So 
Gnomix is the platform for you to um, where your applications will run. It also provides you the fabric around it. What in terms of um, GitHub, right? In in terms of um, Jenkins, for example, the entire delivery pipeline, right? You can set it up on Bluemix. And then, um, of course, this is more for enterprises. If you want Bluemix that's dedicated for yourself or you want Bluemix for your own local version, that's available as well, that's location. And then service, this is the USP of IBM Bluemix, right? Um, there are a host of services, some IBM, third party, open source, and you can upload your own services as well. You can contribute your own services as well. And this is why um, cloud computing is so important, as I mentioned, right? Applications are composed of services these days, right? And these services make all the difference, right? So you will find services, for example, from IBM Watson, which gives you the cognitive capabilities, right? It's available on this platform. And how is it relevant here? The entire uh, IBM Cloud Platform is based on different, different open source tools, right? We call, we call it open by design, right? And you can see the set of open source tools that form the entire stack, right? <clears throat> okay, now coming to Eclipse Cloud, Cloud Development Suite. So, um, as you can see, there are five projects which are listed today under the to Eclipse um, top level cloud development project called ECD, right? And you can also see the kind of the contributions from various organizations who are actively participating in it, right? And Pivotal, IBM, CoreNV, SAP are all key contributors. And interestingly, each one is responsible for each of these. For example, um, Orion, Orion is from IBM, right? Shea is from uh, CodeNV. Um, Eclipse also Cloud Foundry is from Pivotal, right? Um, <clears throat> Dirigible is from SAP. Uh, and Flux is from IBM and uh, Pivotal together. Okay, so now let's move on to um, how do we use it, right? How do you prepare your development environment for cloud development? So I'm taking you through an example of preparing your Eclipse development environment for deploying your applications onto IBM Bluemix. And as I mentioned, IBM Bluemix is based on Cloud Foundry. So you can use Cloud Foundry tools, either integrated in Eclipse or through command line to deploy your applications onto Bluemix. Any Cloud Foundry um, tools will work with Bluemix because Bluemix is built on top of Cloud Foundry. Right. So the first step is go to the download page, download the JE package, Eclipse JE package, which is the um, Java Enterprise Edition package, right? It contains um, a WTP, right? WTP is the Eclipse Web Tools platform. The entire JE uh, development uh, in Eclipse is actually built on top of WTP. And starting Neon, we have incorporated the Cloud Foundry tools for Eclipse as part of the JE package, right? So when you take the JE package, you also get the Cloud Foundry tool. And what we have done is, from IBM side, we have built another, uh, another set of tools using the Cloud Foundry tools, right? Which is called the Eclipse tools for Bluemix. So that is more Bluemix aware, where the Cloud Foundry tools give you the ability to connect to any of the Cloud Foundry, uh, any, um, Cloud Platform or a path which is based on Cloud Foundry. IBM Eclipse Tools for Bluemix is fine-tuned for connecting to Bluemix. As I mentioned, right, you have the Eclipse Platform and the WTP, right, the Web Tools Platform, 
And then on top of that, you have the Cloud Foundry tools, and then you have the IBM Eclipse tool for Blink. And similarly, Pivotal has additional value add as well, right? But that that's not going. To, I'm going to focus on this uh, the purple box of screen here. Okay, the first thing you do is go to Eclipse Marketplace and download Eclipse tools for Bloom, right? So um, I'll take you through a demo of that, right? So before I get into the demo, I just want to pause and see, um, just because the next part is the demo. So just want to know whether you have any questions on some of the topics that we discussed. Okay, take it as a no, that's good. Um, before we get into the sample app, let me let me take you through the demo. Okay, so what you do is you go to Eclipse Marketplace. Hmm. Thought I asked if I've got this connected. Just give me a minute. I have a backup as well. Are you, yeah, it's working, right? So what you do is go to Neon, go to Eclipse Marketplace, right? And it opens up, search for Bluemix, and it's a filter, search for Bluemix. So you will see two of them listed there. Take um, IBM Eclipse tools um, for Bluemix for Neon and install it. Right. It's pretty simple. Um, accept the licensing terms and you should be through. Okay, then it asks you to restart. Once you restart, you will see uh, get started now, right? So you install Bluemix tools, how you get started. You bring up um, the new server wizard right from here. Okay, so you click on get started and then it, uh, the way you use Bluemix tools is by using it to define a new server, create a new server in Eclipse. Okay, so that's this demo. Let's go back to um, Eclipse. It should be connected now. So once you um, install Bluemix, right, you can, what you do is new server. You have Bluemix in here. And you enter your um, use, I mean, email ID and password, which you already registered with um, Bluemix. If you don't have a Bluemix account, you can sign up right from here and finish. That will get you a Bluemix node in here, which lists the kind of application 
uh, that you already have. Okay, let me connect. So once it's connected, it's going to um, show you all the applications that I have on Bloomit, which is listed in here on the Bloomix page. Right. Okay. Switching back to the presentation. So any questions about that? Setting up your Eclipse environment for um, Bloomix development, you install Bloomix tools. You take uh, JE, right? And then you install Bloomix tools on top of that, right? And now I'm going to show you a simple Node.js application, right? A simple Sutter app. I'm sorry, get bigger than the page. Just doing that. So um, it actually helps you to analyze the sentiment, right? It's a sample which is available there. You should be able to um, uh, Google for it and fork it as well. Yes, right. So let's go to Eclipse IDE. So this is my symbol Sutter app, right? And if you look at my uh, Bloomix, it's getting refreshed at this time, right? And there is the symbol Sutter app here, right? And um, it's already connected, right? So it's, uh, it's already connected to Bloomix. I can push my new changes directly onto Bloomix. Okay, so these are the, so Bloomix gives you the nice console where you can look at the various aspects of this app, right? The health of this app, the activity of this app, right? And then you can even fine tune the various aspects about the app, right? For example, it'll tell you when the app was started, right? When it was stopped, um, et cetera. Now let's do one thing. Let's go to Eclipse IDE. Okay, let's run this app, right? We should run this app before we fire. Okay, so the app is working. What are people feeling about Olympic? I think I'm pretty fast running out of time. Okay, let me exit out. The one thing I wanted to show you was that I introduced a, a simple root handler which puts out a message, right? It's a very simple message in here. So you can see here, right? I have another version of app running there, right? The message right here is Friends of Eclipse, right? Okay, so let's make a change in here. Let's push this up. Let's not worry about anything. Let's just push this up, right? So I'm gonna push this app from my Eclipse ID onto Bloomix. Let's look at the application details. And we should see it in the activity log as well. It's still pushing the app, publishing the app 80%. So it's uploading the droplet. 
let's refresh this page. And what does it say about DAX rating? Right? So it first it stopped it, and then now the app has been started. Right? So it's done. Let's refresh this handle that we have. Message change, right? So we just pushed it from what we have in Eclipse IDE. So um, I had a lot more for the demo. Um, but what I'll do now is let me get on with the rest of the slides and leave you there because uh, Okay, so we looked at that. Now let's look at the microservice sample that I was talking about, right? So uh, there is a, this is an article that we have published already. You can Google for it, right? So this is a, a retail application, right? Um, online, online store where the UI is written in PHP. The um, orders, I mean, when you click buy, the orders are generated, right? So that's in Java and the catalog is in Node.js. So the good news is you can load up all these projects in Eclipse. So there is one more thing I did with Eclipse JE, right? I also installed the PHP package on top of it, right? So that I can, um, the UI is actually in PHP. The UI project is PHP. Oh, sorry, you can't see it? Sorry. So the UI project is in PHP. So I installed PHP on it so I can get the PHP perspective and the PHP development environment here. This is in Java, right? This is uh, this is in Node.js, right? And for my Java application is actually, um, yeah, my Java application is actually connected as well, right? So this one is connected to the application on Bloom. Right, so I can push my Java application. All these applications right from here. So I encourage you to um, take a look at what is there, right, in, in terms of the collateral, in terms of the articles, etc. right? Okay, yep, so that's all I had. Any questions? And this was meant to be a, a teaser so that you can get get more information later on. But I want to drive home one important point, which is you can use Eclipse as your development environment for cloud development, right? No matter what language you develop in, right? There are the tools, these tools are available also. Right? And it's it's not just for IBM Bluemix, right? How many of you use um, Amazon tools for AWS development in Eclipse? I'm sorry, for AWS. AW tools, Amazon tools, right, that you can install in the Eclipse so that you can develop applications for Amazon Cloud environment, right? It's available. So look at Eclipse as your development environment for cloud. So that's all I had. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much.